lifting safely, preventing back injuries. According to the National Safety Council and medical research, 20% of back aches are attributed to inflammation, such as arthritis. 10% of back aches are due to actual back injuries and other miscellaneous causes, and 70% result from degeneration of spinal discs. That's right, aging of the spinal disc material causes the most trouble and can cause extreme pain, even from routine body motions. You've all heard the routine warnings instructing you to bend your knees and lift with your legs. However, we don't always pick up an object correctly, or the item we want to lift is sitting under a storage rack or other difficult position. Today we want to explain how the back works so you'll have enough information to make the right choice on how to lift anything safely. We'll also discuss how strains and muscles work so you can prevent these type of back injuries also. There's no magic formula. All you need is a good attitude about safety and a willingness to think about safety every time you lift something. If you do that, you can prevent back injury. First, let's talk about the mechanics of the back. Each disc is a circular pad filled with a gelatinous substance under pressure. The disc looks like a soft hockey puck with jelly on the inside. The disc works like shock absorbers or springs that provide a linkage to the vertebrae or bones but prevents any sliding of the vertebrae against another. The spinal cord is a bundle of nerves in a protected vertical passage behind the disc area. Nerve roots branch out through spaces between each vertebrae and go to different parts of the body. The normal range of spinal movement is shown here while bending forward and backward. As you can see, the nerve roots are in a vulnerable position because the spinal cord must bend and flex without the vertebrae slipping out of alignment. It's quite easy to wear out a disc with normal movement. As you bend and move, your discs are working, just like the shock absorbers in an automobile. Discs can become damaged through excessive twisting, turning, and bending. When this happens, the disc may spring a slow leak. The fluid may leak out and you'll lose disc pressure. This loss of pressure in one disc can affect the entire linkage. It can happen at almost any age. You don't have to be old to wear out your disc. Those who suffer from back pain should pay constant attention to posture while standing, sitting, working, and even while sleeping. The lumbar flexion, or dynamic posture as shown here, helps widen the opening that nerve roots pass through and reduce the chance of pinches. Regular exercise is encouraged. This promotes flexibility of the muscles and all other body parts that you need to keep healthy. Let's talk about those muscle strains. Actually, when you stretch, ligaments in your back stretch as well. If you stretch too far, these ligaments may tear or overstretch. This can be quite painful. Many times we must lift something over our head, so you need to stretch your arms to reach the object to keep the weight centered. Arching the back during a lift makes nerve roots susceptible to pinching. Just remember how the discs protect the back and try to make the lift with your back straight or in as normal a position as possible. When you do this, the discs can do their job without damage and the ligaments aren't stretched so far that they'll tear. Medical research has provided us with some basics about our backs to help us understand how the back works. The back works like any other machine on the lever principle. You have a load and a counter load. The load you're lifting and your back balanced on a pivot point or center of gravity. The heavier the load, the more counterweight you need. Sometimes you must change your position to help offset the load. The back has a 10 to 1 ratio to the object you're lifting. If you're lifting an object that weighs 10 pounds, it's going to take 100 pounds of pressure in your back to lift the object. This puts a lot of pressure on those delicate discs. Add in more weight, more length of lever, or an awkward position, and you're adding much more pressure on those discs, and of course, the ligaments. That's why safety and medical personnel tell everyone to bend their legs and squat down near the object that'll be lifted. This keeps the discs lined correctly between the bones. To perform a proper lift, get a good palm grip. Don't use your fingertips. The palm grip is designed to make sure the object you're lifting doesn't slip out of your hands. Next, bring the object you're lifting close to your body. This reduces the lifting pressure based upon the 10 to 1 ratio of the lever. The closer the load, the
the less pressure it takes to lift. Now, lift the object slowly to prevent any jerking movements that can cause discs to move out of their proper alignment. Again, remember to get a good grip. Make sure the object is close to your body and slowly stand up. This way, you're using your leg power to do the lifting and not your back. That's the standard method of lifting safely, and it does work. How about the more difficult lifting situations, such as trying to lift different types of objects in a less than ideal situation? Let's take a look. In some situations, it's very difficult to bend your legs or get a good grip, making these lifts difficult. Remember, anything you can use to provide additional support is great for your back. How about trying to install a car battery into a vehicle? You have to be standing to get the battery over the fender and into the battery case. You can't bend your legs on this one. The next best thing is to move your legs against the vehicle's fender. This provides good support and assistance to your back when the battery is lowered into the case. Use your legs whenever you can to help reduce the load or pressure on your back. Keep in mind how the discs support your back, the 10 to 1 lever ratio, and that you have ligaments in your back that can stretch and possibly tear. Whenever you have a particularly difficult load to lift, use your good judgment and make the right decision regarding the safest way to lift. Naturally, if the load is too awkward or heavy, get help from a coworker. Twisting your back while lifting is extremely dangerous. Find another way to lift because it only takes one wrong technique to cause a problem. Perhaps you've been lifting improperly, stretching and twisting while lifting, but your back is still in good condition. Well, that doesn't mean you haven't injured your discs. Chances are that time, age, and body mechanics haven't caught up with you yet. Each individual should practice safe lifting all the time, at home, play, and work. Back injuries can be prevented, but you're the only person who has control over such prevention. The most important part of safe lifting is having the right attitude about safety and thinking about safety before you perform each task. Take time for safety because it's important to you, your family, and your job. Module 2, Body Mechanics for Wheelchairs. Let's discuss the importance of using proper body mechanics while performing your job duties. We will discuss how to move your body efficiently and with the least amount of strain and stress while handling wheelchairs. As we discussed in the first module, your back consists of a column of individual bones called vertebrae, separated by cushions called discs, and held together by joint shape, ligaments, and muscles. A healthy back has three natural curves, at the neck, mid-back, and lower back. These curves allow for flexibility and help the spine in its role as a shock absorber. The muscles in your back, abdomen, and thighs are your first line of defense for your back. If these muscles are strong and flexible, they help reduce the stress to your back. Keeping your back in a good alignment as you move allows your stronger thigh muscles to do most of the work thus protecting your back from injury. In other words, avoid reaching and bending from your waist. Bend your knees instead. You'll be required to push wheelchairs over short distances as part of your job. To push safely, you should square yourself up with the wheelchair before attempting to move it, position your feet shoulder distance apart with one foot slightly forward, tuck in your chin, bend at your knees and hips to move the wheelchair, Keep your elbows in at your sides while pushing. Do not lean forward at the waist. Use a rocking motion to get started. If you have a choice, always push instead of pull. You can push twice as much as you can pull without strain. Here are some simple rules to follow when bending to secure the wheelchair. Whenever possible, face the point of action. Get as close to the securement point as possible. Bend your hips and knees to lower yourself to the floor. Avoid bending over at the waist. Reach with both hands. Get a good grip on the straps and ratchets. When rising, straighten your knees and hips as you come to a standing position. Do not jerk as you rise. Avoid twisting your knees or torso while securing the tie downs. Be sure to use these techniques every time you have to bend. The following tips will help you when you have to stoop or squat. Spread your feet apart, get close to the wheelchair, 
lower yourself with your leg muscles, and do not bend at the waist. It's often more comfortable to have one knee on the floor and one knee up rather than a deep squat with both knees off the floor. Use your free hand to help yourself in and out of a squat position. Tips for proper kneeling techniques include use your legs to get in and out of a kneeling position. Avoid waist bending. Stay close to the object you're going to be working with. A half kneel position with one knee up is usually easier to maintain than a full kneel position. You should always try to avoid twisting. It's better to move your feet to turn your whole body. Take little steps instead of twisting. If you need to perform a twisting maneuver, make sure to position yourself so that you have the best possible leverage. Avoid waist bending. Use your arms and legs to do the work, not your back. Let's summarize what we've discussed about using proper body mechanics while on the job. Do not reach or bend from the waist. Test the load by a small movement that can be quickly stopped to be sure you can do it safely. Avoid twisting as you lift. Use a seat or other item for support to push yourself up and out of the squat position. Try to push rather than pull. And use your arms and legs to do the work, not your back. Module 3, Wheelchair Securement. As a professional vehicle operator who will be helping people who use wheelchairs, as well as people with other disabilities, to board and alight from vehicles, you are responsible for the safety of these individuals. Part of your daily operating routine will include wheelchair lift operations and wheelchair securement. The objective of this module is to help you become more confident and professional in performing these duties, and to be more sensitive to your passengers' needs. We will also stress the importance of protecting yourself from injury by discussing the proper body mechanics to be used during wheelchair securement. After all, if you're more comfortable in the job, you'll enjoy what you're doing much more and make your passenger's trip with you a satisfying experience. Remember, safety is always job number one. Trying to imagine yourself in another's position is called empathy. Imagine for a moment that you have no feeling in your legs and that your mobility depends entirely on the use of a wheelchair. Now imagine that on most days you also have a great deal of pain and soreness in your back, shoulders and arms, and that at times you feel extremely depressed or frustrated. Now as a vehicle operator you can begin to understand why a passenger using a wheelchair may seem anxious or impatient. You probably would too under the same circumstances. When you greet the passenger in a friendly and cheerful manner despite their mood, they will feel reassured, more relaxed, and appreciate your upbeat attitude and patience. Your professional attitude will make the trip go more smoothly for them and you. You'll be transporting passengers using both standard wheelchairs and electric wheelchairs. Also, you must have some passengers that wish to transfer themselves from their chair to a regular vehicle seat, and you'll need to fold and store the wheelchair for them. However, this is only allowed if the person can transfer out of the wheelchair without your assistance and there is space for the folded wheelchair to be securely tied down. This space must be away from the other passengers and exit routes. Remember, operators are not allowed to assist passengers during wheelchair to seat transfers. We'll now discuss the loading and securement procedures for passengers using a standard wheelchair. First, consider these points. You must park the vehicle close enough to the curb so that the lift can rest securely on the sidewalk as level as possible. In some vehicles, you can leave the engine running and shift the gear selector to park. In others, you must shut the engine off while in park and turn the key to the on position to operate the lift. Your trainer will explain the proper ignition procedures for your particular vehicle. In either case, you need to engage the emergency brake, turn on the emergency flashers, and turn the control switch to the lift position. Remove the cover from the lift if your state law requires lift covers. When you open the lift door, listen for the interlock brake system to activate. When you greet your passenger, make sure they are clear of the lift. Smile and say hello to the passenger. Ask them how they are, attempting to engage them in pleasant conversation. This will help put them at ease. You'll need to put a lap restraint around their waist and secure it around the back of the chair. If the passenger refuses to use the lap restraint, 
explained that it's intended for their own safety. If this does not convince them to wear the restraint, inform them that company policy requires a lap restraint in order to travel. To avoid surprises, be sure to tell the passenger what you're going to do in advance. Let them know when you're going to wrap the restraint around their waist, start the lift, or go over a bump. Your professional attitude will assure them that you are well trained and that you have had plenty of experience transporting the public. As with all passengers, remember that this may be their first bus ride and they may need reassurance. The following steps should be taken to load a wheelchair user into the vehicle and secure the wheelchair to the floor. Make sure their lap restraint is securely fastened. Lower the lift so that the platform rests squarely and is level on the ground or sidewalk. Back the passenger onto the lift platform facing out away from the vehicle. On some vehicles it may be necessary for the operator to remain on the lift and ride up with the passenger. Engage the wheel locks on the wheelchair. Then secure the lift restraining strap if there is one. Explain to the passenger that there will be a slight jerking of the lift as it begins to rise. Raise the lift to meet the plane of the vehicle's floor. If you're riding on the lift, be sure to hold onto the hand grips of the wheelchair firmly as you operate the lift controls. Cautiously keep an eye behind yourself, making sure you don't trip over the back of the platform. When the lift is fully raised, release the wheel locks. Maneuver the chair back into the vehicle and into the securement position. When pushing the passenger into the vehicle, keep one leg against the end of the lift for support, with one foot slightly in front of the other. ADA requirements state that newer types of vehicles must have forward-facing securement areas. Your trainer will let you know if these requirements apply to your particular vehicle. You should also be aware that the lift can be operated manually in the event of a lift malfunction. To lower a person on the lift using the lift bar, release the hydraulic pressure by turning the release valve. The lift will lower automatically. When the lift platform reaches ground level, tighten the hydraulic valve. To raise the platform, insert the lift bar into the hydraulic pump and pump lift platform up to vehicle floor level. To secure the chair to the vehicle floor, use a four-point tie-down. Straps should only be fastened around the T-connectors of the wheelchair, not the wheels or armrests. First, secure the two front pull-type tie-down straps. Pull up on them until they're taut. Two ratchet-type tie-downs should be used in the back to secure the chair to the floor. Use the ratchet to tighten all straps. Then check all straps for tightness to make sure the wheelchair is secure. Fold the lift to the stored position and replace lift cover. These procedures should be followed in reverse order to deboard a passenger. Keep in mind that you must always recover the lift after each use and store the securement straps in their proper place when not in use. This will prevent them from becoming a tripping hazard or being misplaced. Remember, safety is your primary concern. The lift and securement procedures for electric wheelchairs are the same as for standard wheelchairs, except that you must be sure to turn off the chair's power supply before raising the passenger on the lift. Explain each operational step to the passenger. If applicable, disengage the chair's clutch by moving the belt release handle on each side of the wheelchair. This will prevent the chair from moving while the lift is in motion. The safety issues to remember are, always use a lap restraint, Always lock the brakes and shut off the chair's power when it's in the traveling position. Remove lap restraints when the passenger has deboarded. Protect your back. Use your leg and hip strength when physical exertion is required. Tighten straps while kneeling, not standing. By following the steps discussed in each of these modules, you will not only be providing a quality service to the general public, but you will be doing so in a safe manner, preventing injury to yourself and others. Anticipating the needs of your passengers will help each journey go more smoothly, and you'll learn to appreciate each passenger as an individual. In return, you will then feel confident and proud that you're providing them with a great service. Thank you.